So last week, AMD's first Polaris GPU finally landed, the mid-range Radeon RX 480, and there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the release. Some of that has to do with expectations not quite being met, as well as the PCI Express power overdraw fiasco. I'm not going to touch on the overdrawing issue in this video, or well, probably at all, as this will be corrected by AMD's board partners, and frankly, I think the issue has been blown well out of proportion. When I reviewed the RX 480, it was found to deliver the best bang for your buck of any GPU in the sub $300 price range. Although it didn't rewrite the book on value gaming, it did manage to edge out even those heavily discounted GTX 970 cards. Still, I couldn't help but feel the RX 480 wasn't being shown in the best possible light. Why send reviewers the 20% more expensive 8GB model when it's unlikely to deliver any performance advantage over the 4GB model? This really hurts the cost per frame ratio of the RX 480 and I couldn't understand why AMD would do this. As I said in my review, I've tested the 4GB 290X and 8GB 390X clock for clock extensively and found almost no difference between the two under playable conditions. So why would the slightly slower RX 480 be any different? I don't think it will be, and if that's correct, it just adds to my confusion. Surely AMD are aware of this and want to show their new GPU off in the best possible light. Not only are you paying more for extra memory you can't use, but that extra memory is still consuming power, hurting the RX 480's efficiency. So my plan then was to get my hands on a pair of 4GB RX 480's as soon as possible for a lengthy benchmark session. Sadly, everywhere I tried told me they were at least 3 weeks away from stock of the 4GB cards and AMD themselves didn't have anything on hand either. In fact, reports are coming in that those who have managed to get their hands on a 4GB model have actually received an 8GB card with half the memory disabled in the BIOS. This seems odd and it's highly doubtful that AMD will keep delivering 4GB models that physically have 8GB on board. Chances are this was a last minute decision to get some cheaper 4GB cards to the market. After all, AMD touted the RX 480 as a $200 part. The good news is rather than having to wait 3 or more weeks to show you how the RX 480 handles itself with just 4GB of VRAM available, AMD has provided me with a 4GB BIOS. This allowed me to flash my 8GB cards, turning them into 4GB models by disabling half the onboard memory, and of course, I can flash them back, enabling all the memory once I'm done. So, while I don't have an official 4GB RX 480, I can accurately show you how the 4GB models will perform in both a single card and crossfire configuration. It's worth noting that the memory spec for the 4GB models sees the memory clocked at no less than 1750MHz, whereas the 8GB cards have to be clocked at at least 2000MHz. AMD say board partners can use the faster 8 gigabit per second memory on their 4 gigabyte models if they choose, and we suspect many custom cards will feature the higher clocked memory. Therefore, we've tested using the 8 gigabyte memory spec on our 4 gigabyte BIOS as well. As usual, my standard GPU testing rig will be used, and the full specs can be found in the description. I'll also be using reference cards clocked at their default specification unless stated otherwise. Testing will take place at 1440p and 4K, so let's get on with it. First up, we have Battlefield 4. At 1440p, we see no difference between the 4GB and 8GB models, and either a single card or crossfire configuration. Increasing the resolution to 4K changes nothing. Again, the 4GB version of the RX 480 is able to deliver the exact same performance seen previously by the 8GB cards. Far Cry Primal, with the HD texture pack enabled, didn't see any real difference in the single card comparison. Enabling crossfire did favour the 8GB card by 2 FPS, though we would allow for a 1 to 2 FPS margin of error. Now at 4K, we find no difference between the 4GB and 8GB cards in Far Cry Primal. Star Wars Battlefront shows the same results seen so far in the previous two games at 1440p. Upping the resolution to 4K doesn't change anything, the 4GB cards still match the 8GB models. The graphically intense Rise of the Tomb Raider also fails to show a difference between the memory capacities. Even at 4K, we see the exact same performance between the RX 480 with 4GB and 8GB of memory available. The high the highest possible quality settings aren't being used in Grand Theft Auto V as MSAA and the advanced graphical settings are disabled. Even so, we wouldn't expect the 8GB model to have an advantage in this title given what we've seen previously. Now at 4K, the average frame rate of the Crossfire cards drops to 60fps. This is the same result for the 4GB and 8GB cards. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is famously known as being a bit of a VRAM pig, and yet we see no difference between their 4GB and 8GB configurations of the RX 480 at 1440p. Going to 4K changes nothing. Again, the 4GB and 8GB configurations provide the same results. Overwatch isn't a particularly demanding title, so we certainly didn't expect to find a difference here, and well, we didn't. 
Still, it is a new and very popular game, so I thought it'd be worth including. Although the average frame rate for the Crossfire cards dips below 60 FPS at 4K, there's still no difference between the 4GB and 8GB configurations here. Total War Warhammer is a new addition to our benchmarking. The game's been tested using DirectX 11, as the DirectX 12 mode is still in the beta phase. This is another game that's known to eat up memory, and yet at 1440p we see no performance difference between the 4GB and 8GB RX 480 configurations. Moving to 4K, we find unplayable performance for the most part, and despite that, the 4GB cards hang in there. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is another new title we've included. Sadly, Crossfire support doesn't exist yet, but we can see that the single card 4GB and 8GB configurations provided the same 46fps at 1440p using the ultra quality preset. Please note, testing was conducted with the GPU memory restriction feature disabled. Moving to 4K drops the frame rate of the RX 480 4GB and 8GB cards to unplayable levels. The 8GB version was 3fps faster here, but but frankly, with an average of 23 FPS, it doesn't really matter. Mirror's Edge Catalyst has a hyper quality setting, which does turn the game into an insane memory hog. Hyper cranks up pretty much everything to the next level, though truth be told, the visual difference between the ultra and hyper settings isn't exactly night and day, whereas the performance is. Most notable are the improved shadows, reflections and lighting, but again the game doesn't look drastically different and for the most part, you'll have a hard time spotting the difference. Anyway, the reason I'm showing the hyper results is because they do show a serious difference between the 4GB and 8GB models. Here the 8GB model was 60% faster, which is obviously very significant. That said, the 8GB model is also 30% slower with the hyper quality settings when compared to the ultra performance, so I doubt it's worthwhile playing at just 32fps to show off that larger memory buffer. Well there you have it, a quick 9 game comparison comparing the 4GB and 8GB RX 480 in both single card and crossfire configurations. I've avoided including power consumption results as they could be misleading. Although 4GB of the total 8GB buffer has been disabled, the memory chips are still physically there and could result in higher than expected consumption. So for that reason, I'll again wait until I have an actual 4GB card in hand before providing power consumption results. So moving on, there was really only a single instance where 8GB of VRAM showed any kind of advantage over 4GB, and that was of course Mirror's Edge Catalyst using the hyper quality settings. Sadly, the performance was so diminished by this demanding setting that the advantage of the 8GB card was pretty well null and void. That said, this could have become a real advantage if Crossfire was working this game. Still, for the most part, the larger 8GB memory buffer makes no difference at all, even when utilising two cards in Crossfire. This is honestly what I suspected would be the case, so it makes AMD's choice to send reviewers the more expensive 8GB model even more confusing. At $240, the RX 480 comes at a cost of $2.96 per frame based on our results. Had we been sent the $200 4GB model, that cost drops to $2.46 and our scatter plot would have looked like this. Essentially what that means is the RX 480 would have been by far the best value GPU on the market, my conclusion would have been a lot more positive. Thankfully, once I manage to get my hands on a retail 4GB card from a board partner, I should be able to create the Radiant RX 480 review that should have been. What did you guys think of these results? Was it what you were expecting? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.